Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's work out a little bit more complex example. Still not very difficult, but at least it helps us understand how to conduct a line integral. So here we have a vector, which is defined right here, and we're going to integrate along a path from A to B, but we're going to take two different paths. The first path goes from 0.11 to 0.21, and then from 0.21 to 0.22 and then the second time around we're going to travel directly from A to B in a slanted path. Remember that we're looking for the integral from A to B of the vector dot product times the displacement a small dl and we're going to integrate along the path. So first we go from here to here and then from there to there and add those two together. So let's try path 1a. So what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and write in what those vectors are. So we have the integral from, from now in this case, is going to be from A to the point uh, 2, 1. So we'll just go ahead and write it like that. And we have the vector, so we have y squared in the x direction plus 2x times y plus 1 in the y direction. And we're going to take that vector and we're going to take the dot product times DL. Now remember DL is defined as a small displacement in the x direction plus a small displacement in the y direction plus a small displacement in the z direction. But in this case we're only traveling in the x direction. The displacement in the y direction and the displacement in the z direction are equal to zero. So if along path 1a we can say that dy is equal to uh, dz which is equal to zero. That means that those two components drop off, we're only left with this one, so times dx in the x direction. Now notice when we take the dot product, we multiply the x components together and then the y components together, but since there's no y component, we only have to multiply this, so that means that this is equal to the integral from a, which is the point 1, 1, to the point uh, 2, 1. And of course, if we're going to plug in the limits, and we're traveling the x direction, why don't we just put in the limits for the x direction? So in this case, we go from x equals 1 to x equals 2, and then we end up with y squared times the x, and of course the x hat and the x hat here drop out because we took the dot product. Now of course we can't integrate y squared dx, except in this case, notice that the y value doesn't change travel from here to here, y is equal to 1, so that means that this is equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 dx, or simply equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of dx. And of course, the integral of dx, that's equal to x, and we're going to evaluate it from 1 to 2, which means that it's equal to 2 minus 1, or 1. Remember that we get a scalar quantity when we do a line integral. So we can see that the value of the line integral from a to this point right here is simply equal to 1. Now we have to travel from this point to B along the vertical line, and so that would be path 1B, and again we have the integral. Now in this case we're traveling in the y direction, so we should use y limits. So from y equals 1 to y equals 2 of our vector, which is y squared in the x direction plus 2x times y plus 1 in the y direction, and we're going to take the dot product of that with d dl. Now in this case, notice that the x doesn't change and the z doesn't change. So in this case, for path 1b, we can say that dx is equal to dz, which is equal to 0, which means only the dy component survives. All right, so that means that we have dy times y hat, and of course, uh, yes, y hat, because we haven't taken the dot product yet. Now that we take the dot product, that this is equal to the integral from 1 to 2. Notice when I take the dot product, the x component drops off because there's no x component here. So this becomes 2x times y plus 1 times dy. Now of course, traveling along that path, notice that the x value doesn't change. x will be equal to 2. That makes this value equal to 2. So that becomes equal to 2 times 2, which is 4. So we get 4 times the integral from 1 to 2 of y plus 1 times dy. Remember, x equals to 2. 2 times 2 is 4. We can take outside the integral sign. Now we're ready to integrate. So this is equal to y squared over 2 plus y. 
Of course, we can't forget our four. Let me put the four in there, like this, because we have still have the four. And then we're going to evaluate it from one to two. Now we just simply have to plug in the limits and see what we get. So this is equal to four times. Plug in the upper limit, we get four divided by two, which is two, plus, when we plug in the upper limit, we get two, minus, when we plug in the lower limit, we get one half, and we get one. Like this. All right, let's continue over here, because we ran out of room on the right side there. So we end up with four times two plus two, which is four, minus one and a half, so minus 1.5. So this is equal to four times 2.5, which is equal to 10. So that means that when we travel on the path from here to here, we call that path 1B, the value for that line integral is equal to 10. When we travel along path 1A, the value of the integral was equal to 1. So let's go ahead and put that in here. So now we can say that if we add 1A plus 1B together, that is 1 plus 10, which is equal to 11. And that's the value of the line integral traveling from A to B along the path 1a and 1b. And that is how it's done. Now, of course, this is not the most complicated type of example, but at least it gives you a feel of how to go through the process of taking line, in line integrals. Um, well, we're kind of out of board space, so now let's do the other part where we travel from a to b along that, that uh, angled path and see if the result is the same or the result is different. So stay tuned, we'll do that part on the next video.